if you're watching this, you're part of a group who will be conducting market research on behalf of The Source, an Australian-based company that is conducting this research project across the Australian market and we're trying to understand uh, where companies are at in relation to their uh, business process outsourcing. Uh, I wanted to just talk a little bit about the BPO industry in Australia and across the Asia Pacific just by way of background that will help you understand the questionnaire that you're about to go through and, uh, and to put things into perspective for you. The Asia Pacific BPO industry is comprised of a large number of organisations across diverse operational services from animation to payroll processing and has an estimated market value of $6.4 billion in Australia alone. Over the last three years, the Asia Pacific BPO sector has taken a commanding position in the global arena, with countries such as India, Vietnam and the Philippines in particular experiencing exponential growth due to the impressive standard of service that their outsourcers are able to deliver. Today, more than 65% of Australian corporations engage in some form of process outsourcing, be it locally outsourced or from offshore providers. According to Deloitte's, a leading um, consulting practice, over 60% of the world's back office functions are already outsourced to the Asia Pacific, demonstrating the growing importance of the regional industry. There are a number of different areas within a business and all businesses, be they government or private sector, where outsourcing has become uh, quite important. In the back office, it's uh, in the areas of accounts receivable, accounts payable, claims processing, legal document abstraction, uh, document scanning, information extraction, information indexing, uh, payroll and benefits, administration and legal research. In transport and logistics, it's about accounts payable, accounts receivable, debtor management, HR. In the medical area, it could be uh, medical reporting transcription. In information and telecommunications, it's about application development, system maintenance, uh, systems testing, games testing. In architecture and engineering, it's about drafting, plan recording, storage. Um, in customer service, it's about uh, operator assistance services for telcos. It's about uh, inquiries, customer service, information lines, help desks, uh, uh, fulfillment and member services. In security services, it's about help desk, uh, alarm system monitoring, patrol services. In design, it's about web design, mini site, web hosting, graphic design. Uh, in finance and accounting, it's about general accounting. Uh, it's about tax management, data entry, auditing. In HR, it's about HR benefits, payroll, legal, um, legal support, uh, environment and planning, uh, compliance issues, and in the domestic and custodial area, it's about catering, uh, it's about building management, it's about building maintenance. When companies decide that they're going to outsource, they usually bring together a number of their assets, which would be buildings, uh, call centers, etc., etc., and they standardize the process that all of these companies uh, do. And then once the processes are standardized, they then tend to centralize them and bring them into a central location. And what they're doing in this process is basically uh, having uniformity and consistency of the processes. In other words, everybody in the organization is doing the process exactly the same way. At that particular point in time, the business has a better understanding of what that individual process costs and consequently is then able to compare that cost 
to an outside uh, organization, an outsourcing company, who will then um, compete on a price basis initially for, uh, for that work. In the outsourcing world, we talk about BPO 1.0, BPO, BPO 2.0, BPO 3.0, and BPO 4.0. When an organization has decided to start and um, to outsource some of its business processes, whether they're in the front office or the back office, this is what we call BPO 1.0, lift and shift, labor arbitrage. That is to say that it's cheaper to do it in somewhere like Manila, Philippines, than it is to do it in somewhere like Sydney, Australia. So once they've... Um, been doing that for a while, they start to look at um, technology that can help them do some of the work and automate some of the processes. This is called BPO 2.0. What it means is that they can start to then re-engineer their organization uh, using the technology such as technologies you may have heard of called CRM, Customer Relationship Management Software. And this delivers better efficiencies and technology points. From there, we move to BPO 3.0. And at 3.0, this is where we start to introduce concepts like social media. We start to introduce concepts like cloud computing. So without overcomplicating it, um, what happens basically is the organization moves from a capital expenditure environment to an operating expenditure environment. So it means that they are no longer um, having to outlay quite large sums of money in terms of overhead, people and technology, because now when they move to an operating expense environment, they're starting to use cloud-based systems. They're then starting to um, rent the software and they move into what's called an operating expense environment. The last stage is where they move into BPO 4.0, and this is where they start to use analytics to understand the masses amounts of data that they have now residing in their systems. So currently, the market in Australia, as we mentioned before, and um, it's the outsourcing market is there's some people who supply services in human resources, finance and administration, customer relationship management, which you would know as call centers, which is what you work in currently, um, analytics, uh, the um, analyzing data and so forth, um, printing and print management. And then also there are some areas that we're interested in exploring to see if companies uh, use home-based agents. There's been a number of successes in the market and currently the Philippines market has about 17,000 agents who service Australia. However, there have been some failures and part of the failures are to do with um, overseas agents in India and their accents because people in Australia are unable to understand the, um, the accents of the Indian people because although we're both speaking English, it's hard for us to understand the way that they use English. The marketplace in Australia does not really have a very strong understanding of what outsourcing can do and how it can benefit their business. There is market research available, uh, but it's relatively narrow. Uh, so this research project that you all be embarking on for us is a, a genuine attempt to try and understand where companies are on their outsourcing journey, be it bu business process outsourcing 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. Once we've captured all of the data and we've analyzed it, what will happen is we will then be able to say where Australia as a country is on the, on the outsourcing journey. And we'll also then be able to look at individual market sectors and see where they are on 
the journey relative to the overall picture. Our own view at the moment is that Australia is at just past BPO 2.0. There are some firms who are a little bit further along the journey, although they're very few and far between. So that's the mission and that's what we need to try and understand what exactly is happening in the landscape in Australia in regards to business process outsourcing.